This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to answer the question, is the U.S. headed for a hard landing? A hard landing would be a recession and a stock market crash and generally hard times in the face of the Fed tightening. In order to understand this, though, we need to understand the role that budget deficits play in a hard landing and in a recession. A balanced budget is just when the government spends exactly the amount of money that it brings in. We almost we almost never see this, at least with major world governments like the U.S. government. Budget surplus is also very rare. This is when the government brings in more money than it spends. And then we have the more normal state of, of, of affairs, which is a budget deficit. This is where the government spends more money than it brings in. Right now, the U.S. is running a federal budget deficit of about $1.7 trillion dollars, as we can see here from the U.S. debt clock. Now, the important thing to realize in this video is that federal budget deficits always increase during recessions. We're already spending, uh, we already have a $1.7 trillion deficit. And as we enter a recession, as I believe we are right now, this is going to increase. The budget deficit is going to increase for two primary reasons. The first one is that tax revenues obviously fall during a recession, people lose their jobs, so they're not collecting a salary, so they're not paying they're not paying taxes or as many taxes. And then of course the stock market's down, the housing market can be down as well. And so there are fewer capital gains taxes. In addition, the government needs to spend more money. It needs to pay unemployment benefits for these people who've lost their jobs. And it also needs to just basically it take up the slack that is left from the private sector. If the private sector is weakening the government needs to step in and prop up GDP. At least this is the sort of Keynesian way of looking at it. And whether this is a good idea or not, this is in fact what happens during a recession. The money coming in goes down or falls and the amount of money being spent goes up. As we said, the, the US government has been running budget deficits for a very long time. The last surplus was back in 2001. And this was really just a result of the previous stock market boom in the late 90, in the late 90s and especially in 2000. So you had a lot of capital gains taxes and the, but the US government was actually bringing in more than it was spending. It's been having government, it's been having budget deficits ever since then. So these orange bars, each one of these is a year. Uh, and we can see that the budget deficits have gone up massively over time. And especially they especially go up during these gray bar periods, which is when we have a recession. Obviously we had a very mini recession in the wake of COVID-19. What, what happens is when you enter a recession, you get a spike in budget deficits. If you're finding this video helpful so far, be sure to hit that, sub, that subscribe and that like button. Maybe share this video with a few friends as well. A nice way of looking at budget deficits is to look at them as a percentage of the overall economy. So we normalize them for GDP because obviously the US economy is much larger now than it was in the 1940s or 50s or even 1990s. So what this is a chart, this takes the budget deficit or surplus and we can see that most of the time we're below zero. Here's a zero on the y-axis. Most of the time we're running budget uh, deficits and these are normalized to be a percentage of the US economy. So right now, uh, let's say in 2020, we ran budget deficits equal to about 15% of GDP. So 15% the size of the economy. In 2021, the budget deficits were 12% the size of the economy. Now, what I want to point out here is in the last two recessions, in the 2001 recession, for example, the budget deficit as a percentage of GDP went uh, increased by about five percentage points. So it went from about 2.3 in terms of a surplus in 2000, as we said, to the bottom of the bear market, uh, it went to about minus 3%. So we had a net change of about 5% of GDP. In the great financial crisis from 2007 to 2009, the budget deficit went from minus, uh, went from 1% of GDP roughly to almost 10% to 9.75%. So what we're seeing here in this chart is that when the economy enters a recession, when the US economy enters a recession, you get larger budget deficits as a percentage of GDP. And they seem to increase anywhere from five to 10%. And that number is going to be important in a minute. Right now, the US GDP, so in other words, all the goods and services produced in the US, and this is a measurement of the size of the operating economy is approximately 24.3 trillion for the most recent numbers. So let's see what this would look like if we get 
budget deficits increasing during a recession. As we said in the last two recessions in 2001 and 2008, we had budget deficits increase anywhere from 5 to 10% as a percentage of GDP. So right now, if GDP is about 24 trillion, a 5% increase would be about a 1.2 trillion increase in the budget deficit. In other words, the government would be spending an additional $1.2 trillion that it's not bringing in. A 10% increase in the budget deficit, a 10% of GDP increase would bring us to $2.4 trillion in new government spending that's not being met by tax revenues or not being equalized by tax revenues. Now, the important thing to realize is when you have budget deficits like this, you need to pay for them by issuing new debt, by issuing treasuries. And these are new amounts. So if the economy enters a recession, and I believe we're currently in a recession now, it's quite likely given all the economic numbers we're seeing, and given the way that the crypto markets and the stock market are behaving, it's almost certain we're in a recession. And so we should expect to see budget deficits blow out by this amount. And this is gonna be need, this is gonna need to be paid for with new debt. So we're going to need buyers to step in to buy anywhere between 1.2 and 2.4 trillion of new debt. But it's worse than that because we're currently, as we said, running a 1.7 trillion dollar budget deficit. So if we if we add 5% of GDP to that, that brings us to a 2.9 trillion dollar budget deficit, which is almost 12% of GDP. If it increases, if budget uh, deficits increase by about 10% during this recession. That would add another 2.4 trillion to the existing budget deficit of 1.7 trillion, which would bring us to an astonishing number: four trillion, uh, four trillion dollar budget deficit. That's almost 17 percent of U.S. GDP. Budget deficits, as we said, require the issuance of more government debt. Just like a household, if you're unwilling to cut your spending and your income falls, you're going to need to take on some debt to make up for that that shortfall. And the problem the U.S. government has is who exactly is going to buy all of this new government debt. It's going to be something between somewhere between three and four, maybe even five trillion dollars worth of new government debt every year, in addition to the existing government debt that needs to be rolled over, and that's going to be rolled over at these new higher interest rates. So you have a recession, you have higher budget deficits, you have more debt. Who's going to buy that new debt? Well, it's not going to be the Fed because they've told us they want to shrink their balance sheet. So they're not going to, at least for a while until they're forced to, they're not going to buy any of these this government debt. It's not going to be a country like Russia uh, because we froze their FX reserves. They already uh, held basically zero U.S. treasuries. But you're, you're going to have a lot of sovereign buyers who are not going to want to buy U.S. Treasury debt when they see how politicized the U.S. dollar has become and knowing full well that their Treasury reserves, uh, their FX reserves, if they're st- to the extent they're stored in Treasuries, uh, U.S. Treasuries, which is government debt, can be confiscated or turned off. This may be one reason that China and Japan, who are two of our largest uh, creditors, in other words, we are borrowing money from them by selling them U.S. government debt. They have been selling off their U.S. Treasuries. China's holdings of U.S. Treasuries, as this article points out, has fallen to a 12-year low. Japan has also been cutting its holdings. I'll link to this so you can see the the holdings of especially uh, Japan and China and how they've changed over time. So we have this problem. We have budget deficits increasing. We have more debt being issued as a result. The Fed's not going to buy it. Russia's not going to buy it. China's not going to buy it. Japan is not going to buy it. And so we have this problem where unless some buyers step in, interest rates are going to continue to move higher. And higher interest rates, as we've seen this year, certainly bad for stocks, bad for housing. If you have higher interest rates, you have to apply a higher discount rate in your stock valuation models, which means the entire stock market gets valued at a lower fair value for a given amount of earnings. The other problem with the recession, of course, is that company earnings fall as well. So you get a double whammy of contracting valuation and falling earnings. Higher interest rates are also obviously bad for mortgages. They, they lead to higher mortgage rates, assuming a constant spread. And when you have a crisis, the spread actually blows out. And so the net result is that you get things starting to break. You get much lower stock prices, you get much lower housing prices, 
And we're already beginning to see this. The canary in the coal mine, of course, has been Bitcoin and crypto. Bitcoin is off uh, from its its highs of 69,000, currently trading about 20,000, so it's it's down quite a bit. And then you're having all these implosions in crypto land. We've had Luna, we've had Celsius, and it looks like BlockFi is struggling to survive. So these are the canaries in the coal mine, Bitcoin and crypto. We have stocks selling off, and then of course the housing market is a little bit slower to react, but there are signs that a lot of uh, local markets in the US are cooling off uh, fairly rapidly. The other thing that happens when you get risk assets selling off is you begin to have, uh, you can begin to have problems as well with Fed hawkishness. Uh, you can have, begin to have problems in the US Treasury market. You can begin to have liquidity problems. This was a problem in May. It made the headlines where you get bid ask spreads really widening in the Treasury market. And this is a problem because this is supposedly the deepest and most liquid market in the world. If we take a look at 10 year Treasury note yields, in other words, the interest rate paid on new treasuries that are issued with 10 year maturities, we can see we're, we're very close to being back to 2018 levels, which were roughly uh, about between three and 3.25%. This is where the economy started to break the last time and we began to have the repo crisis. So it looks like we're, we're peaking out again at that, at that level. This has been a key level, this 3% level over the past few years. And it's been very difficult for mortgage, uh, for 10 year rates to go above that because things start breaking at that point and the Fed needs to reverse course and starts buying them. But we have this strange standoff happening, especially yesterday we had Mester coming out and saying that the Fed is just at the beginning of raising rates and that they're gonna be very aggressive and this has been really bad for asset prices. A uh, great thread here from Jim Bianco talking about the only worst year so far is uh, in the stock market, in the US stock market, was 1932, which of course was at the, was at the depths of the Great Depression. And we can see here a chart of, of yearly, uh, yearly returns by month. This blue line is 2022, and it's one of the worst years in history. This only goes to 617, so it's actually gotten a little bit worse since then. So we have risk assets falling, we have stock prices falling, we have Bitcoin falling. At the same time, we have the chairman of the Federal Reserve, which is the central bank in the US, uh, Jerome Powell, saying that the Fed is not trying to provoke a recession, even though they clearly are. And he needs to kind of talk out of both sides of his mouth. He's trying to achieve a soft landing, which would be inflation coming down without a stock market crash. But we're, we're ending up with uh, a really sharp stock market sell-off as we saw. And the problem is that Powell really needs to keep talking on both sides of his mouth. He wants to invoke, he wants to provoke much lower aggregate demand and in this way bring down food prices and bring down energy prices. At the same time, he doesn't want to scare people too much and say that we're going into recession. So what we really have is a game of chicken between the Fed and the markets. And it's a question of who is going to blink first so far, the stock market has been calling his bluff. It's been selling off very sharply. We especially saw a very sharp sell-off in risk asset prices yesterday, both for Bitcoin and for tech stocks and for the S&P in general. If we take a look at federal tax receipts, they are also plummeting, as you would expect. They're down 16% year over year, uh, the May 2022 numbers versus the May 2021 numbers. And the reason they're down so sharply, obviously, is because the stock market's down. So people are pay, paying fewer capital gains taxes. Again, lower tax receipts means higher budget deficits, which means more debt needs to be issued. Now, if the inflation numbers ease off in the coming months, the Fed may be able to pause or stop. But what's going to happen if inflation numbers stay high? in part due to the issues, the problems with Russia and Ukraine and stubbornly high oil and natural gas prices. What happens if the inflation numbers stay high for this reason? Is the Fed willing to keep crashing the stock market and begin to crash the housing market going into the November midterm elections? I would say we're headed currently for a very hard landing unless the Fed reverses course. Stocks will continue to sell off. Bitcoin will continue to sell off. Bonds will continue to sell off unless the Fed reverses course. It may already be too late. I think that something big is going to break this summer and that the Fed is going to need to reverse course probably before the end of September, if not sooner. What really needs to happen here is that the U.S. needs to inflate its way out of its debt. There's no alternative. 
current Fed policy is just delaying the inevitable. The only way out of a situation like this is through inflation, unfortunately. Current debt to GDP levels are at about 124%. We need to bring them back down here to historically more normalized levels of 60, 70 percent. So this is where we are right now. A hawkish Fed has already driven the U.S. economy into a recession. As we saw in this video, a recession always comes with higher budget deficits, and the U.S. government is in the process of needing to issue more debt. The problem with the U.S. government issuing more debt as the economy slips into an slips into a recession is that that, that debt to GDP uh, ratio, this debt to GDP ratio goes up instead of going down. This happens because the numerator is increasing, the amount of debt's increasing, and the denominator is shrinking, which is GDP. In a recession, you get GDP shrinking normally for two quarters. If you want debt to GDP levels to go down, you need to let inflation run hot for a few years. And I think that this is the path that will be cho chosen and that what we're experiencing this year is just a temporary aberration. It's much more politically palatable to have rising stocks and housing prices, even if consumer price inflation remains bad. Politicians that choose austerity and central bankers that choose a long hawkish policy get voted out and replaced with politicians and central bankers who want to have looser policy, who want to spend a lot of money, have a lot of government spending to make people happy. So I still think we see a reversal of this hawkish trend in the Fed by the end of, I would say by the end of September of this year. The money printers will go back on, stocks will rally again, and Bitcoin will rally again. There's really no alternative. And this deflationary falling asset price uh, path that's been taken, the, the Fed is going to need to reverse. It's going to need to start buying and monetizing these U.S. government budget deficits. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when, when I pub publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.